So this seems to be um, significantly better performance than we saw uh, when we throw away the electricity coming out of it. So the amps are 0.4 volts, still 20. Uh, RPM was uh, 3620. And we can still see that we can slow it down and the amp the ampere don't rise. You can also see that the light bulb doesn't get dimmer when I load it. So you can see that the electrical inputs and the electrical outputs are almost completely independent of whether or not I take any mechanical energy from the machine at all. Uh, it has no vacuum enough. At this point, uh, the machine is starting to appear to be a DC to DC converter with an extra output. In other words, we're just chopping uh, DC electricity into the coil and letting the coil collapse, getting the electricity back, and when we, when we slow it down, you can clearly see that the amp meter doesn't move and the light bulb does not change in brightness significantly. So what we're seeing is a behavior which suggests that the mechanical energy being produced here is incidental or unrelated. Okay, so here's our last test setup. What we're going to do is now we're going to run the machine from the supply through our meters, uh, running it as a motor, and we're going to take the output and we're going to use it and apply it to this battery that wasn't in the view before. And so this is a little 12-volt uh, garden battery from Walmart. And this meter right here, our new little red meter here, is the standing voltage of the battery at this time before we start the motor. Just so you can see where the battery is, uh, it's on this side of the diode so that it can't discharge. This blocks a flow through here. Um, so it can't run the motor. It can only receive energy from the motor when the field collapses. So let's start the motor again and see how it behaves. The first thing we can see quite quickly is that the, uh, the, the energy being recovered from the motor um, pushes the battery up from where it was. It was at 12.56 and it pushes it up to uh, well above 12.7 right away. And this is just a very small little motor. It's uh, not drawing very much right now. We can see um, another very interesting thing, so let's bring the meter down here on our amp meter. So now we see that the impedance load of our battery has changed the electrical loading of the motor so that now it's only drawing 200 milliamps, 0.2 amps. Just two little ticks right, right here where all these numbers are, that would be one amp right there. So we're just two notches above the zero, that's 200 milliamps on this scale. And, and let's see how fast it's going. Thirty-six hundred and twenty-seven RPM, three hundred thirty-six hundred and forty, three hundred thirty-six hundred and sixty-six. Pretty stable in that range, 3,663. So it's going, it, first of all, it's drawing only half as much power as we did when uh, we were running a light bulb. It's going just as fast, and uh, it is, uh, the energy now is being recovered and we're charging this battery and it's got it pushed up now to 12.74 which is almost uh, two tenths of a volt above where we started. We can see that it actually starts charging the battery better if I slow it down, which is fun. But it does draw just a slightly bit more electricity when I slow it down. So its back EMF performance is slightly modified under these circumstances, but basically the more it draws, the more it kicks back uh, to our backload. So we, we haven't lost any benefits. It's 
we're not, even though when I slow it down it draws more, it's actually giving back more too. So again, this is still considered no back EMF performance because it's not changing the, uh, the amount of energy it takes to run the motor because the more electricity you're drawing from the source here, the more you're getting back into your um, charging of the battery. So um, these are the three tests we wanted to show today. Um, that the motor is very responsive to electrical loading. You can see that the three different total amounts of uh, energy that it's, it's taken. Uh, and is much, much less responsive to mechanical loading. So um, let's, let's put um, this data in here. We're going to say that uh, we're running on 0.2 amps, same 20 volts. Uh, we saw the uh, RPM reading here, and we still have no vacuum up performance. So typically an unloaded motor um, is best um, understood, the amount of mechanical energy it takes to run an unloaded motor is how fast it goes. So obviously it's running uh, the best by charging the battery and it is drawing the least. Here's some focal shots. This is the transistor. You can see that there is a resistor between the emitter and the base, and then from the base to the magnetic reed, and then right back around to the, the plus. This little device right here is a neon light, and it is a, directly across the emitter collector junction, and that, that would light up if we took the load off completely. This is a little homemade power supply. So the way the motor works is this. The iron piece, the, the, the coil turns on when the iron piece is in this position. This creates a magnetic field that wants to go across this and wants to make this piece here go into alignment. So that rotates it into alignment. As soon as it gets into alignment, the transistor turns the power off so that it can swing through. This, this wheel acts as a little bit of a flywheel to encourage the whole process. And so this thing is running on pulses, uh, controlled by the magnetic reed and the transistor. It's as simple as that. Some people have confused this type of motor with what's called a switch reluctance motor. Our switch reluctance motor runs on a similar type of process in that it turns uh, magnetic fields on across an iron rotor. But uh, in a switch reluctance motor there is no provision to uh, recapture the electricity when these fields collapse. So that's the difference, that's the main difference between this and a switch reluctance motor. I know there's been a lot of discussion about that on the internet, and we wanted to make that distinction. So it may be possible to rewire or, or create new controllers for switch reluctance motors that would allow them to behave this way, but currently they do not. But they are very, very high power motors and they produce tremendous amounts of mechanical energy and so they're a prime candidate for modification to these methods. The reason to build a motor like this is discussed on a DVD that I sell uh, on my website. It's called Electric Motor Secrets. And you can um, get that. Thank you for your attention. Hope you have enjoyed this and have learned something today.